today we're talking wetsuits so thanks jeremy for coming uh, and doing another one i think we got you lined up for a few weeks from now anyway uh next week i think we have um oh, i think it's uh rachel mcbride next week which will be great and then uh after that uh, I'll have to check, but you can always check on the the website uh, page that we have set up for that. We've got like a really good lineup. We have um, Taylor Reed's going to jump in. I don't know if you know Taylor. He's a top end pro. Um, Rob Britton, who's one of the top cyclists in Canada right now. He, he won Tour of Utah a few years ago. I think he even won a stage at Tour of California or something. I might be exaggerating. Anyway, Jeremy might know his spec sheet a little bit more i'll get that but he's uh he's an old friend i used to train with him way back in the day and he's turned into quite the quite the cycling uh guy so anyway lots lots of good stuff coming at you and today let's let uh, jeremy take it away here thanks buddy and no worries thanks for having me again guys uh, it's good to see everybody um so wetsuits um, kind of a necessary evil for triathlon in most cases. Uh, I'm sure you guys already all have your own wetsuits. Um, the first rule about them is uh, make sure that they fit the day before you do a product seminar. And um, I can tell you that it took me 25 minutes to put my wetsuit on yesterday because I haven't worn it since uh, 2016. And uh, I might have gained 17 or 18 pounds, which puts me on the top end of the weight scale for it. Um, so <laughs> this is going to be an interesting video call for you guys. <laughs> you might hear cursing for the first time. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually imagining Jasper is going to fall off of his Swiss ball while he's watching the video. Uh, assuming, of course, you guys actually want me to put it on. Um, so the first couple of things I want to talk about are actually some of the, the technology on the suits. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about customizing your suit uh, as well. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about some of the extra you know, bits and pieces that can help you put, it, put on your suit. And then we'll go right into fitting because it doesn't matter what level of triathlete you are. Uh, I've seen pros, I've seen age groupers, I've seen elites. 90% of the field wears either too big of a wetsuit or wears their wetsuit the wrong way. And so it actually is more of a hindrance than it is an actual tool. So there are exceptions to that rule, uh, my sister being one of them, because if she spikes her hair up absolutely at the tallest, she is five feet. So she falls right into that size spectrum problem where there just isn't a suit that's made small enough to actually fit her. So every suit that she would buy is gonna essentially fit her a little bit on the bigger side. So there are some tips and tricks that I'll show you guys that don't always apply, um, but they are good rules of thumb to, to follow. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about, and I'm, I am gonna move around a little bit, so I, I apologize if I, the camera's a little bit on the shaky side, but the first thing I'm gonna talk about is storing your suit, all right? You should be using a one inch to two inch plastic hanger, like a suit jacket hanger or something along those lines. And ideally, you'll actually store your suit inside out. So the rubber stays in. And you do this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it actually helps to keep the suit somewhat full and stretched so that uh, it's in a hanging position as opposed to a folded position. When it's folded, it folds on top of itself and the rubber will crease at the fold joint and you'll never, ever, ever get that crease out. So if you're actually hanging the suit, gravity is just going to do its job and keep the suit somewhat seamless, but all the inner material as well is going to actually stretch. And with that inner material stretching, it, that's what's going to actually allow you to get the suit on when you weigh 17 pounds too much for the suit. Um, the other reason to store it inside out is if you have pets, the neoprene outer actually is a really similar scent to uh, pet balls or uh, pet toys. And uh, with seeing with with, uh, with with that rubber, cats in particular will get into wherever you're storing, and they will claw up your suit. Uh, dogs will chew it up, and you just don't want anything getting ruined, especially with the cost of these things. Uh, I think the top end 
Roka suit is like twelve hundred dollars, and I don't know if you guys really want to be spending twelve hundred dollars two or three times because your pet chewed a hole through it. Um, the set, the, and then of course, the most important part is washing your suit before you actually store it. Uh, now, anytime you're using the suit, be it training or racing, when you're done, you should be immediately when you get home, showering the suit down, uh, outside and inside. And what you're doing is just trying to remove any of the, the potential, you know, algae or what have you off the outside of the suit that will have, will have gotten coated on, uh, on the inside of the suit, you're trying to wash off your, your perspiration. Now, you don't want to use any soap. Ideally, you're just going to use cold or warm water. You don't really want to use hot water. Uh, and you're just going to give it a good thorough rinse and then hang the suit up and let it drip dry for a couple of days or a day uh, in the shower or in a bathroom or outside, uh, depending on your living situation. That's the easiest way to store it. Most people that we see will actually store their suits in the little mesh bags all folded up. And the problem with the mesh bag folded up is now, of course, your suit's actually folded in three or four different spots, so now you're gonna get those creases on it. The other thing that runs in that it'll run into is that it's pretty easy to take one of these smaller bags and put it into a closet or somewhere where there's no air circulation. And so now the rubber is going to dry up on you. So a suit that should last you 10 to 15 years potentially only lasts four or five because the rubber dries up. So with the rubber drying up, now the suit's rendered useless. Any questions about any of that? Pretty straightforward. I'm doing it all wrong so far. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Good. We're fixing problems. <laughs> Everything I've done is wrong. How do you know uh, when the rubber is dried up? Like, cause uh, like, like the rubber, it, like it's just a weird feeling to begin with. So is it just that it starts cracking or? Yep. It'll, it'll actually turn from black to like a, a gray, uh, almost like a white coating on it. Um, when you rub your finger on the rubber right now, it'll probably have like a little bit of a stickiness or uh, an oily texture to it. And when it loses that, the rubber is dried up. And okay. that's, when, that's when that, that suit's going to get a lot harder to actually thermally protect you. Um, and also when you're putting the suit on, that rubber is going to start pulling off and peeling away and falling off of the suit. Um, one of the ways you can protect it is you, you can, there is, there are some rubber treatments, almost like a spray that'll actually help rejuvenate or rehydrate the rubber. In my opinion, the jury's out on whether or not they actually work, but they do help prolong the life of a wetsuit if you're not going to care for it in, in the fashion that I've described. The bigger concern is actually the inner material. That inner lining is, is what helps keep you warm, but it's also what gives you the structural integrity of your suit. So I'll talk a little bit about some customizing now because wetsuits are built around a body type and a body shape. Um, certain brands will cater to certain cuts as well too. So for example, uh, Orca wetsuits, uh, they're notoriously wide in the shoulders because they're built for stronger swimmers. Strong swimmers have wide and thick shoulders and thick barrel chests. Triathletes don't necessarily always have that. Some triathletes are long, lean, skinny. Some aren't. Uh, and you want to get a suit that's going to fit your body type. So if you were, uh, you know, say six foot one, 160 pounds, which is not very heavy and narrow in the shoulders, an Orca wetsuit might not be the best fitting suit for you to buy because it's actually cut like a V. You might be better off in a Roca or you might be better off in the Blue 70 on their top end suits um, just because their suits are going to be cut a little bit more in a straight line. And you can usually tell this when you hold the suit up on its hanger, if the suit sort of really flares out and then cuts back in then that's going to be that wider shoulder built for swimmer style suit. If you're looking at a suit and it pretty much hangs almost vertical, then that's that suit for that sort of long, tall, uh, thin person. Or you, what you'll see is you'll see that wide, uh, just a wider version and it'll come down straight. And that's built a little bit more around 
uh, that broader, thicker athlete. And the suits are going to stretch quite easily and quite a bit, but you want to make sure that you're, you're curating that suit fit to what your body type is. And this is one of the biggest challenges about buying suits now is that not a lot of stores will actually stock them. So trying a suit on is pretty hard to do. So you have to use size charts. So I'm just going to attempt to share my screen here. Uh Oh, nope. The host has disabled screen sharing. So jazz. Oh, I don't, have I? I, yeah, like, but you know what, while I talk, if you can hop onto blue seventies website, um, on their drop down menu, they have a sizing chart. Hey, um, Jeremy, I, it says, uh, it says I've disabled that. Yeah. That, that doesn't, uh, it's probably just a security measure that you've put just so that someone doesn't hijack and then, you know, share their screen uh, with everybody else and, you know, do some weird things like dance or. See, did that fix it? Yep. That fixed it. All right. So here is the blue 70 size chart. Uh, I'm going to see if I can zoom in a bit. So you can see here what Blue 70 does is they actually give you a description of how their suits are going to fit and what their sizes are, but then they actually have a plethora of sizes. Now these sizes vary from suit to suit. So what the suit I'm actually sizing here is my exact same suit, which is the Helix, which is one of their top end suits. And uh, the size that most people would actually put me in based off of my height at five foot 10 and my weight usually at about 155 pounds as most people would put me in a medium which if you can see here the weight range is 158 to 180 the height is all the same like that that'll fit in but i'll actually wear a small tall so i can still fit in that height range but in the weight range i'm sort of in the middle or a little bit closer to uh, to the middle of their weight range whereas right now i'm actually above their weight range um, so that's why it's going to be a fight for me to get my suit on. I have even worn a small, which doesn't fit my height range, but does fit my weight range. Hey, Jeremy. Yes, sir. So, you know, especially given the current climate of like going into stores and trying stuff on, like if people are going to, get a suit chances are it's going to be an online order obviously what what i'm learning from this is that there's tremendous benefit to actually being able to try the suit on because as you said you you possibly fit into three different ones of their sizes but let's say you can't try it on i mean would you err to the the side of like having a little more room in the suit or err to the side of making the suit a little tighter you always know. tighter. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Always tighter. Um, to give you an idea, Jasper, um, Jeff Simons and I wear the exact same size wetsuit. And Jeff outweighs me right now by about 15 pounds. And mm -hmm. he's two inches taller than I am. Uh, he's also broader in the shoulders just because he is a fairly strong swimmer. And we're wearing the same size suit. We're both wearing a small tall from the same company and the exact same manufacturer. Mm -hmm. If that gives you an idea. So most people will not err on that smaller size. And the reason they're not going to err on that smaller size is just how challenging it is to get the suit on. It took me 25 minutes to get my suit on yesterday. And when I had, uh, when we had speed theory, we would have customers that would come in and they were buying suits that they could put on in a changing room in under three minutes so they're, they're they're buying the sizes just way too big and we would spend hours trying to convince them to try a size down and the biggest complaint was i can't get it over my feet i can't get it up my leg because they, they're not willing to take the time to actually put the suit on properly so when i actually go through that i'll, I'll, I'll touch on on how to actually get a suit on properly, especially with your lower body, but it should take you a good 15 to 20 minutes to put your suit on. If it doesn't, 
chances are your suit's a little bit on the big side. If your suit's on the big side, what that does mean is that you actually have more opportunity to have the suit fill with water. So you're going to carry that extra water that's going to drain, that's going to sit in the suit. Uh, or you're going to actually create a chafe point, a friction point. Because the suit isn't designed to move around you, it's designed to move with you. The other thing, concept of this is these suits are built for cold water situations. And the way that they work is that they're not a dry suit. They let water into the suit and then the suit retains your body heat and warms the water up inside the suit to your body heat. And that's how you stay warm in a wetsuit. The thickness of the material, so some people will hear a five mil, a four mil, a three mil, or a two or a one and a half mil thickness. That refers to how much heat the rubber is gonna keep within the suit, as well as how much buoyancy the suit can provide. So the thicker that number is, so a five mil neoprene is actually gonna be extremely buoyant, but it's also gonna be extremely warm because there's more material. And the material isn't gonna shed the heat out to the environment as quickly. It's gonna help keep and retain that heat. Certain suits, like the one that I've got, they'll actually use varying thicknesses in different spots to either create buoyancy in certain areas for swimmers that do swim chest up and legs down, or they'll actually try and generate it for that natural swimmer where you're swimming on top of the water and they, you don't need the buoyancy. So uh, like a ta that $1,200 Roka, uh, it's, I think the thickest portion of it is four mils and it's only in the chest cavity and then a little bit in the bum. And that just helps bring the bum up. And that's, that's where that concept comes from. So Jer, Yep. Um, so I'm looking at that size chart and you're talking about buying a suit that is smaller. So for someone like me, who is four feet 11, just over 90 pounds, like how do I get at like a suit that actually is small enough for me that isn't a youth one? Because I'm assuming the youth ones aren't the same quality. The youth ones are, it's not a question of the quality. The youth ones just aren't going to be as structured to the higher end suits. So it really depends on what your swimming style is and what your comfort level in spending the money. If, you, if you're looking at spending 600 to $800 on a wetsuit, you're buying one of the top end suits, which is gonna be a little bit more curated towards certain swimming styles, uh, certain fits, but also just to allow your body to actually be able to move. So the challenge you run into, Meg, is that you have to buy the smallest suit that's available to you and then either customize or accept the fact that you're going to drag a little bit of water and potentially run into some chafe points. So you'll have to spend more attention on how to avoid the chafe points and how to prevent some of those chafe points or how to customize your suit. And that's actually a great segue into how to customize your suit. Each manufacturer will actually give you an opportunity either on the sleeve or on the leg to customize the suit with scissors. And you can usually tell that because they put this long strip on the inside seam. With wetsuits, it isn't a matter of the material. It's not that that part's gonna fray off, it's that the seams are the weak points. And that's where a suit can come apart. So if you've got this taped seam, this is actually the, the manufacturer indicating to you, you can cut anywhere on this tape within two fingers from the end of the tape. So if I wanted to, I can hack this part of the leg right off. And what that'll do is shorten the suit, but it'll also actually open up that leg hole a little bit. So I briefly said that people in the store were complaining about not being able to get a suit on their feet or over top of their feet. One of the challenges was that the suit was tapering down too much for somebody with a size 10 or, or 11 shoe. They couldn't get their foot through. Well, that allows you to customize it so that you can get your foot through quickly, but it also allows it so that you can pull the suit up a lot easier. So you're actually not having to yank it up. Most people, what they'll do is when they put a wetsuit on is they put it on like a pair of slacks. They pull, th throw one leg through, try and pull the suit on like one leg of, of their pants and then put the other leg through, try and pull it on like a set of their pants, stand up and pull the suit up. And then that's all they do. Now they put their arms in and fold the suit up. 
the problem they run into is that the suit's not actually properly up. In order to get a suit properly up, it should feel like you have a wedgie. And in fact, when you're putting a wetsuit on, if you've got a friend nearby, get them to give you a wedgie. If you don't know what a wedgie feels like, um, Jasper is more than happy to provide feedback on that uh, the next time he sees you and, uh, and give you a wedgie. I'm an expert. Uh, I'm an expert in getting wedgies. <laughs> Thanks for uh, bringing me right back to high school, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> It, it, it felt good actually to, you know, be able to, to, to bring back some painful memories, right? For all of us, because <laughs> we're all triathletes, which means, means we more than likely didn't play on the football team, which means we were usually the recipients of either wedgies or locker stuffs. Yeah. True story. True story. In high school, in grade nine, you'd get initiated by the older kids and it's stuff that if you did it today, like you just, you know, it's a generation ago. It just, you know, it probably wasn't cool back then, but they got away with it. I got initiated in grade nine, grade 10, grade 11. And finally in grade 12, I had enough peers that were like, oh yeah, that guy, he's not in grade nine anymore. <laughs> I'm, surprised they could ca I'm surprised they could catch you. Yeah, well, always a small, I wasn't a very good sprinter. <laughs> anyway, uh, carry on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so customizing the suit is actually something I would recommend or suggest doing. So Meg, in your case, a suit's typically going to be a little bit too long for you just based off of the height. So being able to customize the legs. So don't be afraid to actually take a nice, big, thick set of scissors. Like I say, take two fingertips, put it on the edge or the end of the, that tape, and then cut that off. It's going to open that leg up, so it's going to be a little easier to get on, but it's also going to shorten the leg up, which in your case is going to make a difference. Hey, Jeremy. Yep. I'm just going to, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Cause, um, <clears throat> you know, I think it's the interesting to just see like what the highest end athletes do. And you'll notice that they, a lot of them cut their suits very, very high, especially on world cup. And they do that. So if you're ever watching a world cup triathlon and you see them come out of the water with wetsuits, you'll notice like how high up they've cut the leg. And a, most of that, is so they can get it off super quick. So they're, they're not getting bogged down in transition, trying to get the leg of a suit off. So I'll just show you a real quick picture here, unless you had one. No, you didn't. No, nope. I'll show you this guy. I don't even know who this is, but he's got a suit cut the way that I want to show you. Um, <clears throat> can you see that guy? So if, if you look at like this leg, I mean, it's almost right up to his kneecap. You can see basically all leg here. And uh, this suit would just be so easy to get off. Um, not that that's a concern necessarily for this group. Like you guys want to be comfortable in the water and feel good in there. It's not, you know, if you have to spend an extra five seconds in transition, getting your suit off, whatever. But uh, Justin, you know, that's, you keep, that's just a good example. Can you keep this picture up for a second? Yeah. All right. Uh, can you guys notice anything on the upper body of the suit at all that's also a little bit different where are the cuffs of his sleeves okay now where do you wear your sleeves my suit's too big <laughs> okay this is going to be an expensive zoom call <laughs> No, Chris, I'll try and save you some money. <laughs> um, if this guy was wearing a watch on his left hand right now, would you see the watch? Yeah. Okay. When you guys are wearing your wetsuits, can you see your watches? No. All right. Okay. So, Jess, uh, that's, that's awesome because that totally leads into the arm section that I was just going to talk about. You'll notice on my suit, I don't have that taped seam. In fact, the only thing I have is a little knob. So I can't cut the sleeve of my arm. But some suits, like some of the entry-level suits, will have the exact same seam on the arm, and you can customize the arm so you can cut it. And that's going to allow that to open up a lot easier and a lot better so that you can get your hands through a lot faster. And yeah, a lot of the ITU racers will cut their suits as super high up on the legs and they'll cut them super high on the arms. 
and two reasons why they'll cut them on their arms. They'll cut them on the arms, one, so that it actually exposes their wrist. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but most of us have hair on our forearms, and that hair gives us kinesthetic feedback in the pool. So when you're pulling, you can feel the water get as you're pulling it, right? If you're wearing your wetsuit down at the cuff of your wrist, you can't feel the water because you don't have any hair on the palm of your hand or in the back of your hand. So you don't have an idea of what you're pulling the water through, meaning that you have no kinesthetic feedback about speed, hand position, and arm uh, position. So you don't know if you're actually swimming elbow high or if you're actually dragging your arm through the water. All you're doing is you're, you're focusing on the wetsuit pulling down on your shoulders. By exposing the wrist, you actually now get some of that feedback. So the pool swimming that you're doing, you'll get some feedback from, the, from that portion of your hand. You'll actually get that feedback when you're open water swimming. The other reason that the, they'll cut the suit that way is, of course, getting the suit on and off. Again, same idea. It's all about speed. And ITU racing, you don't actually have wetsuit strippers. You have to get your suit off yourself. And because of, of how quick those guys are in transition and need to be in transition, a race can be won or lost in transition at IT level. Hey, just on the kinesthetic note, just a fun little, little uh, addition to that. Um, so, you know, like swimmers will shave their bodies like, the, you know, if you're racing, especially at the Olympics, like they'll totally shave down. And part of that is to remove hair. But the other part of it is to remove dead skin. So they, that kinesthetic feel in the water increases. Um, and another thing you'll see them doing quite frequently is like at Olympics or a big event when they get announced and come out on deck and they go behind their blocks, a lot of them will actually rub their hands on the rough part of the blocks to kind of just like aggravate the skin a little bit. So when they jump in the water, they, it's just a heightened sensation. And another thing we used to do just for fun uh, was we would, we would soak our arms up to our forearms in the hot tub for a, like a few minutes and then get in the pool and swim because it would really heighten the sensation of that area. Anyway, some fun things wow. to try. Yeah, swimmers are weird. They're like hockey goalies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're getting the sleeve up. You guys noticed where the sleeves were in that picture that Jasper shared. So this guy had really hiked his arms up and you guys have all admitted and fessed up that you don't actually hike your arms up as much. Again, this is, this is a challenge that we would see in the shop full time. People were actually putting a suit on and they'd throw their arms into it, peel the suit up, do the zipper up or like pull the zipper up or have come out and have us zip them up. And then they would do zero adjusting on the suit. They'd be like, okay, great, it fits, perfect, I'll take it. And we would spend so much time convincing them to try one size down, and most people wouldn't because of the amount of effort and, and work that it would create in generating, you know, trying to get them to, to try a suit on in, in there. And again, you'll, you'll witness this as well. Um, but by sizing down, you would have had a suit that fits you that much better when this guy jumps in the water and uh, invariably he's actually already been in the water he'll add a little bit of water inside the suit and then shift it around a little bit more putting a wetsuit on when you're dry is extremely challenging because your body is going to resist it mostly because you're going to start sweating because of the heat of putting this thing on dry uh, but also because the suit itself is dry when you get it wet it shifts around a lot more and a lot easily uh, it's almost like putting an air bubble in it um, so again, don't be afraid to size down. So all that being said, uh, I guess I should probably start putting this uh, on. So I'll, t I'll walk you through some of the steps and I'm gonna actually unplug my headphones. So I apologize if there's a bit of an echo or if you guys hear any dogs barking in the background, but uh, I'm gonna actually need my full body on this. All right, so hopefully you guys can still hear me real, real well. So one of the first tips or tricks I give you is leave the upper body inside out. Okay. 
And this way, you have something you can grab onto. So this inner material, you can actually roll under your nails, you can actually squeeze, you can stretch, you can pull, you can do whatever you want with this inner lining material. The outer lining material is extremely sensitive to nail tugs and nail pulls, meaning that if you haven't cut your nails, or even if you have, like I, mine are, when you go to pick the suit up and roll your fingernail underneath here to, to pull the suit up or pull it on, this will actually give you a nail puncture. So you want to avoid that. If you're not super, super delicate with your fingertips, use some dishwashing gloves. And this will actually protect your suit. In fact, these are extremely handy to have in your wetsuit bag full time to put a suit on because it's rubber on rubber. So it's a lot easier to actually grab your suit and pull, be able to, to use it, but it also protects it from any kind of nail tugs. You also wanna make sure you have your body glide or your lubricant. Do not use um, any petroleum-based products. The reason you don't wanna use a petroleum-based product um, is that your suit is rubber, which is a petroleum base. And if you're using a petroleum-based liquid, then that will ruin the wetsuit a lot faster. You will see ITU or professional triathletes use that type of lubrication because it, it tends to stick on the skin uh, a lot easier. But they're also getting given four to six suits a year to destroy, and they're not buying them. They're not paying full pop. They're not paying anything really for their suits. Uh, so it's easy enough for them to destroy them. So uh, make sure you're using something that's water-based like Body Glide, um, you can actually use chamois cream as well. That's a, a nice alternative. Uh, but Vaseline is the worst thing you can use on a wetsuit um, and on your body around a wetsuit. If you don't have gloves, plastic bags work. But my favorite trick is keep your socks on. If you don't have socks, so if you're going to the beach, and you're wearing flip-flops, take a set of bags or take a pair of socks with you. And you just need to put one sock on at a time. And you wanna have somewhere that you can sit and as you can see, this is a tight fit. So that is where most people will stop pulling their leg up. I'll put the other leg on and then you guys can watch me fidget. So most people will actually just pull a suit on to here. They'd be like, okay, I'm ready to go. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but I actually have this much wetsuit below my crotch that hasn't come up yet. So that's about two and a half to three pounds of water that's gonna fill that area. And I'm sorry, I know that was a uh, not a, a pleasant thing to see this early in the morning on a Friday. Good graphic. <laughs> I think it's uh, like one of the things we always used to say is that you never, you never want to be fighting the suit. So if the suit is like down too low and now you're trying to get range of motion through the shoulders, like you're effectively fighting the suit because it's like, you, you know, if you need to pull it all the way up your body. So that little space Jeremy just showed like that all needs to come right up. Um, so that all the way up the chain, uh, you have more range, like you're, you know, the suit just gets pulled all the way up. So now when you need to extend that arm and have lots of clearance through the shoulder, you're not fighting it. Sorry, Jeremy. 
No, no, no. That's that's that's. I couldn't have explained it any better, Jazz. Um, all right. So how do I get to get the suit up? All right. So I'm gonna. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna angle this a little bit more for you. So. That's how much material I'm just able to get up. Now, can you guys see the difference between the legs? Okay. I have not cut my suit, and yet I'm actually wearing my suit in the almost exact same position of that guy that Jasper showed on my right leg. And my left leg is like a pant, like a pant leg. Okay. And this is why triathletes shave their legs. So that when you're putting your wetsuit on, you're not grabbing your hair and ripping it out. But you guys can see what I've done is I'm creating these folds and then pulling the folds up. All right. That's one leg. Why do you think they make wetsuits black? Like, is there not a, like, you're swimming in dark water. You can't see anything. Uh, and, they, and they're the color, like the hardest color to see. I'm always surprised I don't make them super bright so you have a better chance of seeing someone's leg or face or, or, or whatever. It's extremely expensive to dye the material. Oh. Yeah. Um, all wetsuit rubber comes out of three factories in Japan. All wetsuits. So everybody has the same access to the same material. And the reason that it comes out of these three factories is that, to be honest, they all have access to the same stuff as well, but those three factories manufacture the best inner linings for the neoprene so that it stretches. Yamamoto is the most flexible material that you can get, but it's also the most expensive. I can't remember off the top of my head what the going rate for it is right now, but back in 2010, uh, it was close to $200 per square meter for Yamamoto rubber. So you want to know why the swim is the first portion of triathlons? Because if we had to do this in transition, <laughs> our races would take forever. All right, so I've got the suit up quite a bit on my, on my legs, all right? And I wear my suit up that high for the exact same reason that uh, with my hands is I want to have some of that kinesthetic feel with my feet. I want to be able to feel the water, right? But the other main reason is so I can get the suit all the way up. And I haven't quite got it fully yet because I don't have a full on wedgie, but it's pretty close. So it's, it's up. Now you, you want to get ready for the upper body. So the trick on this is you take your watch off. and you take all your jewelry off. Even a, a super flat wedding ring, you take that off. Okay, you can put them on after the fact, right? But you should have no jewelry on at all. And like I said, you wanna make sure all your clothing fits too. It was a tight fit getting into my tri-suit this morning. <laughs> 
Jeremy, you are by far the most committed presenter we ever have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just make sure you don't get your laptop wet when you carry us to the lake in a minute to show us how to swim in a wetsuit. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I don't live by a lake. I do live by the ocean, but I, uh, there's no way I would swim in the, but in the ocean near where I live. Uh, Steveson's more known for its runoff uh, on the pipes than it is for its uh, swimming stuff. So one of the reasons why I leave the arms uh, inside out while I'm putting a suit on is just that it's a lot easier to actually kick debris off of the inner material as opposed to pulling it off of the rubber material. And if I need leverage, sometimes I will actually grab onto the arms of the suit. So like if I'm actually really trying to get it up, I'll sometimes do that. Now, what you'll see me do is I'll reach into the suit, pull it out and up. And you can do that on the front and the back as well as on the hips. And what you're trying to do is effectively get the suit up as high as possible over your butt and over your hips. Now, this was always our favorite point doing fittings in the shop. And the reason for it is that this is the point where we would get customers to come out of the changing room. Most people were coming from work or from family time. So they don't really want to see, they don't want to see a, they're getting fitted in a, in a gitch. Um, when they would come out, they would actually do the, the one thing that I don't want anybody to ever do is that they would double arm into their suit, peel the suit up over their shoulders. We'd zip them up and then they'd be like, okay, I'm done. That's it. I, I'm not putting the suit on any further. I'm not putting another one on. I'm buying this suit and off they would go. And ideally you will do one arm at a time. And because of how thin this material is, my, the arms in this suit are one and a half to two mils. Uh, so it's extremely sensitive, extremely thin material. So I won't grab this one barehanded. All right. So can anybody tell me what's wrong with this portion of the fit so far? Right? Yeah, all right. That's how much wrist I'm going to expose. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with leaving a little bit of extra folds or material, either in the forearm portion or in the elbow if you have to. Okay, so if your suit's a little bit on the longer side, like like Meg's is going to be just because she's so tiny, then leave the fold in the elbow or ideally in the forearm. Right, so that's one arm in, kind of. Anybody else really warm? Yeah, yeah. This looks like hard work. It look it sort of reminding me that I don't want to ever get in a wetsuit again. <laughs> Did you get into a wetsuit this morning at like five thirty. Yeah, no, I we don't go in wetsuits in the ocean. What? Yeah, we do. We're we're. Uh, we just go float around with shorts on. <laughs> it's 
That's why I'm always in like a down coat <laughs> on Friday mornings. Takes a while to warm up. Sorry guys, your uh, your screen just disappeared. There we go. Can you see me? You good? Yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. There we go. With the uh, aquasphere. Yep. Is there a certain body type that wetsuit is um, built for, like you were mentioning before? Uh, the top end aquasphere suits, like their suits over six hundred dollars, are cut a little, cut in between an orca. Um, Chris, you're six three, right? Six two. Six two. Yeah. Um, aquasphere would be a, a decent fit for you. Um, you know, you're built like you're built similar to me in the sense of you know, not super super wide in the in the shoulders, but you don't need that extra bit. Um, yeah. The only challenge I'd find with their top end suit was if you're not barrel chested, um, it it uh, can give you a little bit of room up in the in the chest. Um, like, yeah, the Roca, the Blue Seventy. The uh, Aquasphere, uh, those would probably be good suits. The Hoob would be, the Hoob top end suit would be a good fit for you as well too. Yeah, I think I'm trying to remember, I'll have to look it up, but I, I don't have the top end one. I have like a, I don't know, a mid-range or what, whatever. It's like a black and kind of maroon color. Yep. All right, so, now I've got my arms up, right? So now I'm ready to be zipped up and I can get in the water. No, nowhere near. Now, now the, the true fight begins because now I need to actually get the suit all the way up my chest. All right, I am super sorry for what you guys are about to witness. So the easiest way to continue to get your suit up is do a squat. And then slowly hand feed the suit all the way up. All right. <laughs> this is awesome. This is so okay. good. <laughs> you're going to do that two or three times. And what you're doing is you're actually pulling the suit up into your crotch again and up over the hips right you look like sort of a very awkward superhero just like a superhero that is also you know not really that refined yet in his changing methods like superman there's no way batman could get into his suit in like two seconds <laughs> You're also making me not want to put my wetsuit on because I forgot how hard it was. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to quit triathlon after this and just go to the donut shop. <laughs> or just do triathlons for that it's not wetsuit legal. <laughs> All right, now I'm getting to the point where I can almost get zipped up. And because I have a reverse zipper, I need help. So I'm always the guy in transition making friends. And the way I make friends is I'll usually go up to them and say, hey, if you give me a wedgie, uh, I'll give you one back if you want. If not, then you can just give me the wedgie. <laughs> and most people are pretty stoked about that. So 
I'm going to go and make sure that I have somebody that can give me a wedgie. Uh, but most importantly, she doesn't want to be on camera, so I'm just going to turn the computer so that when she does step in here, she doesn't have to be. Uh, so give me one second. Jeremy goes above and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Other duties as required. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> He's a good sport. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, my, uh, my my partner in crime here is uh, is happy to wow. provide the services. But, so before you, you zip me up, can you grab the inside of my zipper and just give me one wedgie? Pull the suit out and yank it all the way up. There we go. All right. <laughs> So I have a question about sleeves versus no sleeves on a wetsuit yeah. and which, like, like, do they have different, I don't want to say performance um, aspects of it, but like, is one more preferable over another? Um, it really depends. Like really strong swimmers, people who grew up swimming their entire lives, uh, they would prefer a sleeveless suit. And the reason they prefer a sleeveless suit is so that they can feel the water completely, but it also doesn't give them any shoulder restriction at all. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thanks, man. Um, so basically, a, a sleeveless suit, it's basically cut off here. Their arms are completely free. However, it creates a massive ch chafe point right in on the armpit because you're exposed right underneath, right? Um, a sleeved suit is faster. If you're not gonna shave down like Jasper described, then the sleeve is gonna provide a slipstream in the water. So it will provide a little bit more on that. For temperature rating, it will actually keep you a little bit warmer having a sleeved suit as opposed to having a sleeveless suit. Right. And then even with the armbands, because I've seen now some you can buy, like we have for running, like like the wetsuit material armbands. So is there a difference if you have the armband versus the full sleeve? Yeah, if you wear the armband, you're more of a dork and likely to get wedgies in transition, uh, both ends, uh, as opposed to not. Um, the armbands were designed to, to give people that same sort of slipstream style feel um, if you're wear if you're not wearing a wetsuit, um, and I think some of that was designed around Kona. I don't think there's been a, re a ruling on it for or against Kona. Good questions, though. All right, so now I can put my watch on. And you get an idea of where I'm wearing my sleeve. And that's gonna give me that feel in the water. Now, the feel that I'm looking for right now uh, is relief, because um, I'm wearing a suit that's like two sizes too small for my weight. Um, but uh, that's gonna give me that, that feeling of speed. It's gonna give me that feedback that I'm looking for, of just where my body is and positionally. But it's also gonna give me the idea, of, like when you are swimming, am I able to keep my elbow high, or am I actually dripping down, dropping down? And the way that you can tell that is, the temperature of the water, depending on the depth of your lake. You know, uh, for Ironman Canada, with it being in, in Penticton this, or was supposed to be in Penticton this summer, that swim, as soon as you get out beyond the beach, the temperature of the lake just drops. So you can really feel if you're swimming too deep because your fingertips will actually glance right on that colder water. So this will give you an idea now of te just the temperature, but also where you're pulling and how you're pulling through that water because you've got that exposed bit of wrist and that, that feedback. So I do look like Batman. I just need the utility belt and, uh, and a cape. Uh, but that is a wetsuit fit. Now, any additional fitting that I need to do, I will do in the water. So I'll physically go into the water 
I'll open the suit up and I'll let in a good amount of water, like a cup of water if I can. And you can shift the suit around a bit more on your chest. You can shift it around in your armpits. You can shift around your arms. You can shift it around to your legs and even into your butts. And you'll know because the suit will sort of pop. And when it pops, now it's in that set position where you're going to feel just absolutely relaxed. But you should be able to comfortably put your hand above your head and not feel any resistance on the tops of your shoulders, which I don't feel right now. That was one of the useful tips that we would give customers. Unfortunately, we give it to them before they put the suit on. And so they'd be wearing too big of a suit. They'd come out, they'd put it up, they'd put their hands up and go, I don't feel any resistance on my shoulders because they're buying too big of a suit. All right, I apologize, but I need to get out of this thing because it is war. So getting the suit off is quite simple in the sense of you just turn it inside out. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky because the suit isn't wet, but when the yeah, suit is wet, definitely easier, uh, definitely easier when it's wet. And I, I'll give you a little pro tip here. One of the things we used to do is before we get to that stage, we would grab our, uh, our cap and goggles in this hand, whatever hand. And then when you pull that first sleeve off, you just leave the cap and goggles in the sleeve inside out. So then you don't have to, you know, exactly where it is at the end of the day. You're not wondering where your goggles and cap went. It just ends up in the sleeve of your suit. It's a good little trick. So as a former business owner, I hated that tip because I wanted you to come back in and buy more caps and goggles. <laughs> I needed you to, uh, my business depended on it. Uh, Now, had I trimmed my legs, this part would be a lot faster and a lot easier. The, um, at the World Cup level, if you ever just go look at a video of them in transition getting out of their suits, when they cut the suits as high as that picture I showed you, uh, they can literally step right out of it. They don't need, they don't even use their hands to get out of their, the leg part of their suit. They literally just like, they pull the suit down as far as it'll go and then they just take a big step and their foot pops right out when they get good at it. It's very, very quick. Yeah, it's pretty impressive to watch. Yeah. All right. Okay, so give me two seconds. If you could, I need to put a t-shirt on and get out of this uh, tri-top that's cutting off all the circulation. What kind of uh, suits are people using? Uh, Megan, what kind of suit do you have? I've got an Aquasphere. Cool. And, and it was just basically what was available. Yeah, yeah. And Chris? Oh, sorry. I have uh, Aquasphere as well. Yeah, and Joanne? I think that's what I have too. I bought it in Tromelon a couple years ago, maybe. Yeah. Aquasphere. Yeah. Because cool. I, I think, yeah, I talked to you. That's right. I was buying it. And you yeah, said, oh, yeah, get yeah. it because that's a good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Andy? Uh, I got an Orca. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. My, uh, my second Iron Man, I swam in an Orca. My first Iron Man, I swam in an O'Neill. And, uh, and then I have had three of these Blue 70 Helixes, which is, it, it's the suit that's fit me the best. Mm. Yeah. all right the last bit that i will talk about is repairing so i don't know if you guys can see this so i will try and show it but i actually have a fingernail nick two of them in fact in my suits now these don't go all the way through right but they will eventually start to peel one of the easiest ways to fix that is rubber cement so you can just go into your kids uh, elementary school um, sandwich bag, grab some rubber cement and put some contact cement on there and then 
you want to put it underneath the fold, push the fold down. And ideally you want to put something heavy like a, an encyclopedia uh, on top of that overnight, let it dry. And that'll actually repair your nicks. So that you just, like, is that essentially what wetsuit glue is? Wetsuit glue is kind of like a rubber cement. It's got a little bit more nasty chemicals in it than rubber cement does, but the rubber cement is a really good repair tool. Wow, that's a neat little tip. So, I mean, you get that from any stationary, like staples or... Yep. Wow, that's a new one. And, yep. uh, yeah, you just repair it. So you put that in there, you close the nicks, you put some weight on it for a while, and then... Yep, just put it right on it and leave it overnight. Wow. Yep. What, uh, um, in your opinion, how how big of a nick or a cut is too big to repair? Because I know some people end up with pretty significant things like anything beyond it's it's not a matter of the length like you can repair our, our rental suits for example we've actually had somebody where the entire chest cavity across we were able to repair with Off rubber cap. cement yeah really yeah it's not wow. a question of how long the nick is it's how deep the nick goes and if the nick goes all the way through the material and it goes to the inner lining yes then your repair is going to be patchwork. You're almost better off at that point of actually getting like a, a tire boot and gluing like a, a, an inner tube patch over top of that. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah you, the other, you can use uh, super glue, but in my experience, the super glue does, it will eventually break apart and dry up. The mm -hmm. rubber cement just works that much better. But the whole idea of it is, most fingernail necks, so the material itself, if you call it solid, the fingernail neck almost gives you like a flap. Yep. And so you put the rubber contact in underneath the flap, and then you just fold the flap back down and put a weight on top of it. If you get something where there's a separation and there's material missing, you can still use the rubber cement. So you just put the rubber cement in there and fill that gap, right? But you don't put anything on top of it. Now you just let it rest for, again, another eight to 10 hours. And that, that can give you easily an extra 30 to 50 swims before that starts to break down. What's so, the typical lifespan of a suit or does it just depend on how well you treat it? It depends on how well you treat it. It depends how you store it. Uh, it depends on, on where you're using it, how often you're using it too. If you're yeah. using your suit three, three times a week, throughout an entire summer season, uh, you're probably going to get three to five years out of a suit. Mm -hmm. But if you take care of it, you can get 10 to 15 years as long as you're taking care of the nicks and you're not storing it. So the big thing that will kill a, a, the suit is ultraviolet light. So if you're storing your suit in a, in a garage and you have those neon lights, anytime you're turning those lights on, that creates ultraviolet light that will actually potentially dry your suit out. So you want to store it somewhere that's a little bit cooler. There's some airflow. So to get, uh, I actually store my suit in my closet next to my, my business suits. Um, it just hangs off the back of that. There's airflow in there. Um, there's plenty of room and it can actually just hang at full length. Mm -hmm. Some people will store them in the front hall closet. Some people will actually store them flat and tuck them away in a garage. So that's, I don't recommend putting it in a garage. I recommend storing it somewhere in your, in your home just because that way the temperature is controlled. What about uh, using it in pools? Chlorine, is that particularly damaging or no more so than like salt water or whatever? Salt water doesn't damage it. Chlorine can damage the seams. So what the chlorine will attack is it won't attack the neoprene. It's going to attack the nylon material that forms the seams. That's what the chlorine is going to kill. And the chlorine is going to kill the inner lining, that inner material. So this, this orange material on the, uh, on the inside of my suit is extremely flexible and the black is not as flexible. Uh, that orange material get, can get killed by chlorine. And the only way that that's going to get killed by chlorine is if I put the suit on, hop in the pool, get out of the pool, don't bother rinsing the suit and just put it away wet and let it dry. That's, the, that's how the chlorine will kill it. When you're done in the pool, rinse the suit. So if you're going to a public pool to test out your wetsuit, um, 
and get laughed at by lifeguards and everybody else that's in the pool, um, then just make sure that when you get out of the pool that you're rinsing the suit off immediately in the, sh in the, uh, in the shower. If you can't because of COVID when they eventually do open the pools, then when you get home, rinse it immediately. If you're swimming in a back, uh, your backyard pool, when you get out of the pool, rinse the suit immediately at the garden hose uh, or uh, in the shower and then again, let it, let it hang dry for a day or, or overnight. When you're swimming in salt water or lake water, you wanna make sure you rinse that suit immediately. And it's not that the salt water or the fresh water is gonna attack any of the material, it's that when you're swimming in a lake or the ocean, it's mostly algae that's gonna create the problems for you or any microorganisms that are in the water. Cool. All right, any um, questions about any of that? No? Okay, who needs to buy a new wetsuit based off of sizing and fitting now? Show of hands. We'll see, I'll have to try it out. <laughs> um, if you do feel the need to, to, to buy one, if you want to have a, a private conversation, again, you can always reach out. Jasper can put us in touch, uh, and we can talk a, a bit more about some of the different features of some of the higher-end suits, some of the lower-end suits, what's a better fit, uh, as well as potentially some places that you can go to either try a suit on, because there are still some shops that do stock them, either as rental fleets, uh, or there are sometimes uh, manufacturers that will have demos and demo days are always awesome. Um, most of the Ironman events have uh, sponsorship deals with uh, the wetsuit manufacturers. And if you're going in on uh, a Friday before your race, you can usually demo a suit on the Friday or the Saturday. So you can actually try two different sizes of suits if, as well if you wanted to. Right. Uh, now that, process of me putting on my wetsuit was a little bit quicker than yesterday. So I would probably say it was about 15 to 18 minutes of putting the suit on, assuming I wasn't, you know, teaching and, and showing. Um, that should roughly be the amount of time it takes you to get into your wetsuit. If you get into your suit any faster than that without doing any adjustments, then you might be you might be wearing too big of a suit, which means you're probably dragging a bit of water. Now, if you're not chafing anywhere, then really you're not you're not giving up anything. You know, it's not like it's going to change your swim times from 130s to 130 to 150s. It's going to change your swim times from like 130s to maybe 133s or 134s. Um, just to put to put a number on it, if I had to. The biggest thing is chafe. You do, do not want to chafe, right? And that stuff helps, but having a suit that fits you properly makes a bigger difference. Cool. Awesome. So um, that, that, that's everything I've got on wetsuits. Um, dude, that's awesome. That was, that was, as always, I always learn something too. I'm like, holy, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, now, I didn't use the baggie, but it's pretty basic. It just goes over top of your foot or your hands. Uh, I prefer to wear socks and I prefer the Mylar gloves myself, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. So those are my tips. Um, and uh, if you guys have any of your own tips, I'd love to hear what's worked well for you guys. Uh, Jeremy, what is what? I often swim with like a blue 70 neoprene cap with a thing that comes under the chin. Um, I've never been able to really work out. Would they even allow you to swim with that? Like put your swim cap over that in a race? Um, it depends on the, on the race. Uh, I think there's a temperature rating. I can't remember if they've come up with a ruling on that, Andrew. Um, I think I, this guy here, I'll show you that picture I had. He has exactly that, and he's at a World Cup, so I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's, he's got, got it on at the World Cup, but there, some yeah. of the World Cups, if you're swimming in water that's cooler than, I think it's 16 and a half degrees, then they allow you to wear the neoprene caps underneath the swim cap. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, definitely do, He's definitely wearing yeah. that under. Yeah. Yeah. A Andrew, um, <laughs> I don't think that you would get a ruling for wearing one. 
as opposed to you would get a ruling if you're not wearing the provided swim cap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, my biggest thing with, with wetsuits and water is just getting cold. I, like I am cold all the time. And so even the thought of cutting legs up, <laughs> up to my mid calf, it just makes me, <laughs> makes me shiver. Um, uh, so I, I just look for things that, uh, keep, keep me warm. Uh, di didn't know what, what's out there for hands, yeah. um, and stuff like that. Yeah. There are swim socks and swim gloves. Uh, you can only use them in training. Swim socks yeah. were allowed at, uh, Placid two years ago. Uh, they allowed them in Ironman Whistler two years ago as well. That was that really cold, wet uh, year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but those swim socks, if you do cut your suit mid-calf like that, uh, those swim socks, you can actually pull them up underneath the suit and tuck them in. Yeah. So now yeah. your, your leg's fully covered. Okay. Um, yeah. They're a good investment. They've worked really well. If you don't yeah. have those, uh, this is an old school trick, but uh, wool socks. Really? Yeah, thick wool, tight-fitting socks uh, will make will help keep your feet uh, warm in the water. Is there? I just feel is that do they kind of shrink wrap around your foot or something, or are they well, or you just have to kind of give give up a bit of speed for that? That feels like it'd be a lot of drag. You can give up a little bit of speed with it. That's why I say you want to have them as tight as possible. Like if, if, if you're buying like the old wool, wool socks from Mark's Work Warehouse and putting those on, they're going to be a, a boat anchor. But right. if you're buying like a technical wool sock, like a, you know, um, trying to think, uh, like a, a wigwam or, um, you know, icebreaker sock that fits your foot really, really tight. When you pull that on, like pull it on super tight and then tuck it under your wetsuit as tight as you can get it yeah. in the wetsuit. That'll actually help keep your feet warm. Cool. Oh, cool. The, the only other comment I have is that um, the, you almost need a, a nutri nutrition plan while you're putting on your wetsuit. It takes that long. <laughs> yeah, mine, mine last night was uh, a couple of beers and a shot of vodka. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. um anybody else got questions or no uh i don't think so well uh as jeremy said like definitely reach out to him you can just fire me a note if you if you want to chat with them if you're in the market to get a suit and uh but this has been great jeremy thanks so much man you're such a good presenter you're, you're, uh, it, it's really great. I, I, I really appreciate it. I know everybody else does too. So, um, thank you so much. I'm just glad you guys enjoyed watching me trying to squeeze my, uh, myself into a suit. It was great. <laughs> <Thanks so much. laughs> uh, and, uh, thank you as well. Always. Uh, it's, it's great seeing you guys, uh, on these, uh, these calls. Cool. Thanks Jeremy. That was awesome. Anytime. Okay, guys, we'll, we'll see you next week. Spread the word. I think it's uh, – well, check the website. I'm pretty sure it's um, Rachel it, next week. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, good. sorry, uh, uh, just a quick follow-up question. Um, show of hands, who, who bought torque wrenches? I had one. I already had one. It's on the list. <laughs> it's still on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> okay. Um, and I've got a question, like, for you guys. Make sure one of you asks the Purple Dragon <laughs> – or the purple tiger, pardon me, um, how she wears her wetsuit, where she wears her sleeve, and if she cuts her legs. Okay. Actually, can I ask you a quick question, Jeremy, about bike seat height right now while I'm thinking of it? Sore knees. If my knees are sore, should I put my seat up? Are they sore behind the knee? Uh, no, kneecap? patella, like on the knee, under, at the kneecap. At the kneecap? Hmm. Um, Generally speaking, Maybe that wasn't a quick question. <laughs> no, generally speaking, something like that, uh, you would need to raise your seat a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try just to touch and see if that will help. Before you do that, um, one of the things that I, I always firmly believe in for, for seat height, because mm -hmm. um, it could be fore aft that's actually your issue. Well, I'm wondering that too, because I got it. It was just a, my road bike that I bought at Christmas time, and it was just a really quick setup. And the guy said, oh, come back. But obviously, with COVID, I haven't gone back so 
So put your bike on the trainer. Mm-hmm. Uh, put your oh, on. I can't put that. It's the disc brake one. Oh, uh, okay. Do you, is there someone that can hold the bike for you while you're actually on it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's very easy. Mm-hmm. Okay. They have to hold your handlebar facing mm-hmm. you. Tell them to put your legs as wide apart as they can, and they hold the handlebar in the tops position, so on the flat part of the, of the handlebar position. Mm-hmm. Okay? When you get on top of the bike, you're going to grab onto the hood's position, and then you can clip in, and, and you can pedal around. It's super easy for them in that position to keep you somewhat stable. But mm-hmm. what you want to do is unclip one foot, put your heel on the pedal, and pedal backwards. And do not let that heel come off the pedal. If you can pedal the whole way around without your hips dropping, rocking, or, or moving around, or mm-hmm. if, you can't, if you cannot reach full extension, bring your seat up a little bit. Okay. Okay. If your foot is coming off the pedal or you have to really drop that, that hip, mm-hmm. right, where you're getting that, that's, that knock, then I would bring your saddle down a little bit, and then you might have to bring it back a touch. Okay. I'll give it a try. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Um, Okay, buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Good to see you guys again. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Always good. See you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.